Continuing right along with our 4.0 beta overview, uh, we just went over the add device dialog revamp, and now we're actually going to use it to do the dual stream RT, SP, HTTP, or UDP streams. Um, so, before we begin, dual streaming is very important in our software. Um, what dual streaming does is it allows us to perform what we call adaptive scaling. So if we've got a lot of um, devices um, being decoded at 1080p or above, then I'm going to impact the CPU usage of a specific machine. So you can see this is the machine I'm currently on. Uh, my CPU usage right now is 17%. Um, I've got uh, 2560 by 1920 stream. I've got a 2592 by 1944. i got a 1080p. i got a 2592 by 1944 I got a 1080p and I got a 1080p all being you know decoded at the same time now this machine is ridiculous it's a core i9 it's got 32 gigs of RAM and a, and a 1080 uh, video card from Nvidia so it's kind of overbuilt right and it's because I do videos with it um, so we're only at 18 percent right now so you're not seeing a lot of impact to the CPU but if I just slam it with all these high definition videos, right, then uh, you can see it start to go up again, a beast of a machine. Now, if I go here and I click on right click and I say resolution and I say switch to low, all those, all those screens just switch to low stream uh, resolution. Um, and what you'll see is the CPU drops off, right? And that's because it's decoding a lot less pixels. Um, so that's adaptive scaling. It, it, it's there to save you CPU usage. Um, it's there to save you network um, speed. Um, so when you have a clogged network and you're starting to drop frames and you're trying to watch live video or playback uh, recorded video, uh, we will switch to the low res stream just to be able to deliver you the video uh, as, as seamlessly as possible. Um, so that's adaptive scaling. That's dual. That's enabled by dual stream. So. The reason that we put in uh, dual stream support for RTSP and HTTP and UDP is a lot of people want to integrate uh, older uh, legacy IP cameras um, that may may or may not support dual streaming. Um, they also want to integrate uh, legacy DVRs and NVRs. So rather than swapping out the entire system with digital, uh, they just want to integrate uh, this DVR with a cabling all in place, uh, turn it into uh, something that can be digitalized and recorded and managed with NX Witness. So this is a way to do that, right? So, um, like I said, create dual streaming cameras from RTSP or HTTP and UDP streams. Um, again, the high resolution stream uh, is the primary stream usually. Uh, the low resolution stream is the secondary stream. Um, the high resolution stream is for uh, getting the clearest picture, what's been recorded or what's happening live. The secondary stream is for adaptive scaling. Uh, it's also for server side motion detection. Uh, we run motion detection on the lower resolution stream uh, at very, impa very low impact to your CPU. That's what enables smart motion search. Um, so how do you use this, right? So the first thing you want to do is you got to go add a device, okay? So you're going to add a single RTSP stream. Uh, then you go go into that device in the camera settings, and you're going to choose the advanced tab, and then click the edit streams button. And then once you've done that, uh, you can add a secondary stream from the same IP address. So let's let's practice it, right? So new layout. Let's get rid of that. Um, going to add a device to the NX2. Now this is a known address. Um, I wrote it down. Uh, you will always have to do this for RTSPs really. Um, so I put in RTSP, the IP address and the port, um, and then the login information, uh, which is a very difficult password. And I press search and there you go. I can see I've got a generic RTSP coming in. Um, click on it, add devices, and it may take a moment for the device to get added. It didn't. 
it's right there so if I click on this uh, device and open it up sometimes a new RTSP stream uh, will take a few seconds um, before it starts effectively streaming so don't freak out if you're getting a little bit of a uh, no signal um, it will come back even if you're making a video and it seems like it's taking too long it'll still come back at some point here it, it will prove me uh, right there you go that was that was nerve-wracking so here's my RTSP stream coming in right you can see that I've added it it is a 2048 by 1536 at 15 frames per second uh, around 2 megs uh, H.264 high res so now I want to um, change this I'm going to change this to my uh, RTSP high or, or streams All right so now I go into the camera settings um, I go to the advanced tab here and I've got an edit, edit streams button now you can see the advanced tab you now have two streams uh, just like you do for onviv cameras or dual streaming arm onviv cameras or native integrated devices um, and I want to go to edit streams so you can see I got the option to add a second stream here so I'm going to add my super secret second stream and press OK and then press apply and the camera's going to freak out for a little while uh, or the stream's going to freak out for a little while because I just did that but again uh, not to worry it will come back and it's back already um, so let's make sure I'm on live here yep go into the camera and so there you go you can see RTSB streaming isn't as, as nice as um, uh, native integration per se but still works so now I've got the uh, RTSP stream um, brought in it's still in the high res if I go here and I say resolution um, if it's got a low stream associated you'll be able to choose low and you can see it switched over to the 640 by 480 um, so let's just move it back to high and that's how you do it that's how you add a dual streaming RTSP HTTP or UDP stream into the software really cool new feature um, adds a lot of possibility for integrating third-party uh, existing uh, video systems um, so it's pretty nice check it out